Thank you for joining us for today's orientation on the recognition of public and private child development centers offering early childhood programs for ages zero to four. Uh, before we formally start our program, uh, I would like to greet all our guests from the different cities and municipalities from the cluster of Northern Luzon. So everyone, you may click on any reaction button to show how you're feeling today. Okay, so let's begin with uh, the National Capital Region. Welcome po. Also, um, welcome from to all the participants from the Cordillera Administrative, Administrative Region and from Region 1. All our friends from Ilocos Region, Region 2 from the Cagayan Valley, and lastly from Region 3, Central Luzon. Welcome po sa lahat, sa lahat ng child development workers and teachers, ECCD practitioners, both from public and private, and the local officials from health, nutrition, and social welfare division. Last but not the least, we also have participants who are parents and caregivers. We warmly welcome everyone. And before I forget, uh, for the whole month of May, March, I'm sorry, we recognize and celebrate all women and all the women's rights. And we recognize the importance of discussing and raising awareness about the challenges women face around the globe. So to all the women out there, we salute you. So before anything else, allow, allow me to introduce myself. I will be your host, Jolly Yao, your Program Development Officer 2 from the Programs and Policy Unit of the ECCD Council. To officially welcome us with this opening remarks, we have with us our OIC from the Office of the Vice Chairperson and Executive Director. Please welcome Sir Romel Isip. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Yeah, okay. Okay. Good morning. Uh, good morning to all. No, as the officer in charge to the Office of the Vice Chairperson and Executive Director of the ACCD Council. It is my honor and pleasure to welcome you all to this online national orientation on the ECCD standard guidelines for center-based program for zero to four years old and the guidelines for the registration, granting of permit and recognition to child development centers and learning centers. Given our mandate in RA 10410, or also known as Early Years Act of 2013, it is our responsibility to promote the rights of children to survival, development, and special protection with full recognition of the nature of childhood and as well as the need to provide developmentally appropriate experiences as mentioned in Section 2 of Declaration of Policy. We all recognize and agree that the child is one of the most important assets of our nation. Every effort should be exerted to promote his welfare and enhance his opportunities for a useful and happy life. And we, as a service provider, stakeholder, and an ECCD advocate, have our own roles to play in preparing them for the future. Moreover, our country has been affected badly by the pandemic, climate change, armed conflict, and others, which resulted to a lot of crises, one of which is the educational crisis. This educational crisis will be aggravated in the long run if we will not address a more impending problem which is the developmental loss in our children, particularly those belonging to zero to four years old. This is also due to prolonged lockdown, inaccessibility to quality ECCD program and in services. In the condition of this critical age and stage of development of the young children, it is our duty to provide quality ECCD program and services, which is both a right issue and foundation of development. Quality ECCD shall promote the delivery of integrated program and services on health, nutrition, early education, and social services. Having said this, putting this mandate into action requires an intergovernmental and multi-sectoral collaboration effort from all the ECCD stockholder and stockholders and services and service providers, both public and private. If I may reiterate and emphasize collaboration from all stakeholders, considering the ECCD multi-sectoral in nature and a shared responsibility of all. We, we are and we will continuously appealing for all dedication, for all your dedication, commitment, and hard work in ensuring that these integrated services 
will be available and provided for our young children zero to four. In this slide, we hope that this orientation on the ECCD quality standard and guidelines will contribute to the achievement of our common goals, and that is to provide for the basic holistic needs of our young children, promote their optimum growth and development, and eventually secure the hope of our nation. Maraming salamat po at magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Thank you. Back to you, Jolly. Okay, thank you so much for your warm welcoming message, Sir Rommel. On that note, uh, I believe that everyone's ready for today's orientation. Uh, just a little reminder before we get started. If you have uh, any questions during the presentation, kindly type them in the chat box in your Zoom or our Facebook page. There will be time for questions after the presentation of our two speakers for today. Now, without further ado, let us welcome our first presenter, Sir Carl Sabalza, our Planning Officer 3 from the Programs and Policy Unit of the ECCD Council. He will explain about the standards and guidelines for our center-based early childhood programs, followed by the guidelines on the recognition of both public and private child development centers offering early childhood programs for children zero to four years. Good day, everyone. Since madami po tayong mga concerns regarding the recognition and application of our uh, child development centers and early centers, the ECCD Council initiated the national orientation on the standards and guidelines in ECCC. So for this day, uh, the outline of our discussion will focus on the quality standards in ECCD, where we need to talk about the rationality and the legal basis. We will also discuss for our second session the standards and guidelines for center-based ECCD programs for zero to four years old, and its guidelines for registration, granting of operating to operate, and also the recognition. Then we will discuss the goal, the development process, the different areas, the guidelines, and also the implementation scheme. But before that, uh, let's talk about why quality standards. Why is it important? Sabi ko dito, providing quality in our standards in ECCD is both a right issue of young children and foundation of their development. Development. So there are two things. First is the right issue. Karapatan po ng mga bata na magkaroon sila ng maganda, hindi lang ng basta-basta uh, pag-aaral, but yung maganda, yung may kalidad. But Isa din po sa gusto natin isulong dito, the reason why we had this document is that we want to provide foundation, foundation for their future if we want to prepare them na maging competitive sila, maging productive sila in the future, maganda na nag invest na tayo ng maaga, lalo na dun sa kanilang foundational stage and age. Okay? And also, sabi to, quality early education helps prepare young children for success in school and later in life. So, why does uh, why, uh, quality look, uh, what quality looks like? So in NAYC, this is the National Association of uh, Educators for Young Children. This is based in New York. So association po siya ng mga educators. Uh, for them, they describe uh, ECCD program with high quality as a safe and nurturing environment. Um, very simple lang din, sabi nila, safe dapat and nurturing environment. When we talk of safety, hindi lang po ito nakafocus on the physical environment, but also considering yung effective environment wherein yung bata kaya nilang maging totoong bata na pwede silang maglaro pwede silang mag-explore and also they can express their emotions freely if they want to cry if they want to uh, get angry so dapat yung environment nila safe sila sa ganap. At the same time, syempre nurturing. Pinaprocess natin sa kanila. Tinutulungan natin yung mga bata para i-process yung kanilang emotions. Para maintindihan nila kung anong nararamdaman nila. So, sabi, if we have this kind of environment, it will help promote yung kanilang physical, social, emotional, and cognitive development. 
sabi if we have this program it will greatly uh, affect yung yung kanilang uh, development depende kung paano hina-handle ito ng no, mga teachers not just teachers also but the service providers even other stakeholders na involved in the development ng mga bata so uh, before we continue with uh, this discussion I just like to share with you this um, quotation this is by Gabriela Mistral sabi na dito we are guilty of many things many faults but our worst crime is abandoning the children neglecting the fountain of life many things we need can wait the child cannot right now the time his bones are being formed his blood are being made and his senses are being developed to him we cannot answer tomorrow his name is today we need to act immediately kasi habang tumatagal yung panahon habang nagkakaedad yung mga bata medyo na babawasan na yung opportunity na maibigay natin sa kanila at matulungan natin sila na mag-develop dun sa uh, optimum level ng development. Okay? And now, tingnan natin, ano ba yung legal basis? Why we have this document? Basically, it's uh, uh, from our mandate in RA 10410. So, the Early Years Act of 2013. It says here, in Section 3, Our Objective, the National ECC system shall pursue the following objective. First, to upgrade and update capabilities of service providers. So, it's our mandate na kung ano yung existing natin na standards na sinusunod natin for early development, kailangan natin siyang i-upgrade and kailangan natin i-update. The reason why we want to upgrade itong mga programs na to, mainly because nag evolve din yung, yung bata. Yung generation ngayon, hindi na natin sila pwede i-compare doon sa dati. Hindi na natin sila pwedeng sabihin na ganito kami noon. Nung mga bata kami, titigan mo lang. Okay na, di ba? Matatakot na, susunod na sa'yo. Ngayon, kahit anong gawin mong titig sa bata, naku, walang, walang reaksyon. Minsan ikaw pa titigan nila o kaya pagtatawa ng ka nila. So, gusto natin na yung standards natin nakasunod din ano ba yung appropriate for children. That's why ina-upgrade natin siya and also ina-update din natin siya. Ano ba na yung mga current na, na appropriate talaga for children. So that's why even our standards is sinunod din po natin. And also, we want to improve the quality of our public and private. Isa din po to sa kaya tayo nag-update ng ating standards kasi before nakafocus lang tayo sa public and 3 to 4 years old lang yung kinocover natin. But right now, our um, responsibility for 0 to 4 covers the public and the private ECCD programs. Okay? So that is basically our mandate. So because of that, we developed these two documents. First is the Standards and Guidelines for Center-Based Program. And the other one is the Guideline on Registration and Granting of Permit and Recognition to our um, centers. So pag-usapan muna natin, ano ba yung goal ng development nito? Very simple lang yung goal. It's to promote quality early childhood experience. So that's the goal of these two documents. So ano yung objective natin for having these um, two documents? First, if meron tayong i-develop or magpuputa pa lang tayo ng center or we're planning to build another child development center, maganda siya na guide kasi dito makikita nyo na from its different areas ano yung mga checklists na kailangan ko i-consider, ano yung mga dapat kong i-prepare, ano ba dapat yung physical structure, paano ko i-manage yung center, ano yung ibibigay ko na program for children, ano pa yung other considerations ko. So, everything makikita na po natin dito. And since meron tayong uh, indicators for that, eto na rin yung pwede natin gamitin na monitoring tool, self-monitoring tool. Kasi habang meron ka ng ongoing program, makikita mo na dito na Tama ba yung ginagawa ko in terms of securing yung uh, outdoor facility ko? Tama ba yung mga equipment na meron ako? Yung loob ng center ko, yung arrangement ng mga gamit ko, tama ba yung pagkaka-arrange niya? So, kahit may existing ka ng program, etong document na natin to, you can use this para uh, mag-guide sa'yo, para magsabi sa'yo ano yung kailangan kong i-improve. Since ito na rin yung standards and guidelines natin and we have specific indicators, Ito rin yung ginamit nating reference for the assessment. So, pag nag-accredit tayo, like the term that we're using before, and now it's recognition, so while evaluating the centers, ito na rin yung tinitingnan natin isa-isa. So, we have the same standards, we have the same guideline, we have same indicator doon sa ating assessment. 
tool. Yeah. And now for the development process of the standards. So we started with documentary analysis. During the documentary analysis, we gathered different um, standards and guidelines from different countries. So we have from uh, Finland, from Singapore, Western countries. So ginather po lahat itong iba't ibang mga documents ito. Ano-ano nga ba yung mga standards in terms of addressing the needs of uh, children, particularly yung very young children, yung 0 to 4 years old, yung iba 0 to 8, yung iba 0 to 6. So all these documents were gathered. Tinignan ano yung mga different na mga guidelines din para ma-ensure that we are developing or uh, providing uh, quality programs. And then, after the documentary analysis, we had a workshop kung saan we write ano yung mga standards that is appropriate for Filipino children. Same thing, nagkaroon din ng workshop to develop the guidelines. After the development, mag nagkaroon po ng consultation works, uh, consultative workshop. So during the consultative workshop, we invited all the uh, members, the technical working, uh, who will be the technical working group ng development nito from the different agencies na member po ng ECCD. So we invited from the Department of Education, from the Department of Health, the National Nutrition Council, the Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines. We also have from the Department of Social Welfare and Development and syempre representative from the ECCD Council. Aside from those members, we invited also experts from uh, academe, yung mga practitioners po ng ECCD. And again, we also involve yung mga local government unit representatives. So from the provincial to the city, municipal, child development workers and teachers and then the uh, MS and CSWTOs. So, nagkaroon po ng mga consultative workshop. And then after the nung consultative workshop, yung result po nun, uh, ginamit to modify and edit the documents. And then, we had the validation of these two documents. So, kinunvin uli itong mga different uh, agencies and personalities para magkaroon ng validation and to review again all the the standards, the guidelines, and the indicators. And then after the review, we revised it again. And then after the revision, it was submitted to the different members of the governing board for final review and approval. So, ito na po yung um, na-approve. In 2015, ng September, the ECCD Council, through a board resolution, approved this document. So, ito yung sinasabi natin na una, the standards and guidelines for center-based uh, early childhood program for 0 to 4 years old Filipino children. Ayan, I'll show you yung other document. But first, tingnan muna natin, ano yung nandito sa document. Ito yung sinasabi natin na areas. Ito yung titingnan natin, ito yung sinasabi natin na magda-guide sa atin. So, we have the area on health, nutrition, and safety. We have physical environment and safety. Then, the interaction and relationship between staff children and among children and other adults. We also have staff qualification, development, and continuing education. And then curriculum, instruction, and assessment. The family involvement and community linkages. And lastly, leadership program management and support. So pag tinignan po natin, when we talk of health and nutrition, eto yung tinitingnan natin. The program promotes health, nutrition, and safety of infants, toddlers, and young children through the education of center staff and parents who are responsible for the implementation. Pag tinignan ninyo, hindi lang po siya nakafocus sa 3 to 4. Tingnan rin natin dito yung infant and toddlers. And also the involvement not just of the service providers in the centers, but also in, we include parents kasi sila talaga yung responsible of implementing itong mga health and nutrition practices. Hindi lang kasi dapat sa center, but also sa bahay para talagang ma-insure natin na magiging healthy and magiging well-nourished yung ating mga bata. Okay? Next is physical environment and safety. So the CDC has an outdoor play and classroom environment that are safe and accessible to young children, including those with special needs with appropriate and sufficient facilities. Pag tinignan nyo po itong standards na to and all the indicators here, tinitingnan din natin kung meron tayong provision so that it our center will be inclusive. Our center will be accessible to other children na may mga um, disability or other needs, may special needs. Okay? Next, we have the interaction and relationship between staff, 
and children among children and other adults. Dito titingin natin is kamusta yung sinasabi natin na affective environment. Kamusta yung ipinakikita ng ating mga uh, service providers, particularly our child development teachers, child development workers, the teacher aid, yung mga volunteers. Kamusta sila? Nanonourish ba nila yung bata? Yung values ba na gusto natin i-inculcate sa kanila na we witness ba nila sa atin? So very important na tinitingnan din natin tong area na to kasi napakahalaga nung kung ano yung nakikita, 'di ba usually kung ano yung nakikita ng mga bata, yan yung minimimik nila, yan yung ginagaya nila. So importante na may tamang gabay yung ating mga uh, service providers kung ano yung paano nila ikinokompose yung sarili nila lalo na pag nado sila sa mga centers nila. Yeah. And then we also have the staff qualification, staff development, and continuing education. So, dito titingnan na kamusta yung qualification. Pag tingnan nyo, there is a qualification for child development teacher, may qualification for child development worker, meron din for teacher aid, for volunteers, and other staff and management part meron din dyan. Tinitingnan natin ano ba yung qualification? Kasi nga, sabi natin, we want to provide quality program. So, dapat yung capacity, yung kakayanan, yung knowledge din ng ating mga service providers, may quality din. And, hindi na siya natitigil doon. Part of this area, dapat may pinoprovide din tayo na continuous na professional development plan. So, tinitingnan dito, ano ba yung mga trainings, ano ba yung mga capacity building na kailangan makuha ng isang service provider in the sector. Next is our curriculum instruction and assessment. Ito, pag tinignan ninyo, there's no particular na uh, curricula na sinasabi. Dito, tinitingnan lang na dapat appropriate siya for Filipino children and also it's based on the early learning development standards na validated for Filipino children. So, yan lang yung tinitingnan natin dito. Dapat yung curriculum na meron kayo whether you're a private or a public, appropriate siya dun sa bata. Depende sa kanyang age, depende sa kanyang development, depende dun sa stage kung nasaan ang bata ngayon. Yun yung tinitingnan dito sa indicator na to, or sa standard na to. And next, we have the family involvement and community. Kasi we believe na yung bata, di ba, hindi lang naman siya nabubuhay bahay center, ganyan. And most of the time nga, nasa bahay. So that's why it's very important that we involve the family, particularly the parents. So, dapat yung center, we promote yung harmonious relationship and build strong collaboration, ayan, working relationship with stakeholders towards effective delivery of programs and services. So, dapat even the community, masasabi talaga natin that it's really a safe space and safe place for our children in terms of development. And lastly, we have the leadership program management and support. Dito kasi tinitingnan natin, unang-una, sino ba yung committee or the composition who will ensure that we will deliver quality program? Who will ensure na uh, there will be a comprehensive plan in terms of addressing the needs, in terms of planning, and providing programs and services na kailangan ng isang bata. At the same time, tinitingnan din natin dito na dapat yung programa is sustainable. Okay? So, those are our seven areas. Pag tinitingnan ninyo in these um, areas, for each of the area, may tagi-tagi sa siyang standard. There's a written standard. And then, uh, several guidelines and indicators, sub-indicators. Ito mga indicators na to, these are like specific checklist na pwede mong basahin, pwede mong tingnan mga things that you need to uh, consider and also you need to put in place pagka nag-put up ka ng center or pag nag-assess ka for improvement of your center. This is the second doc document. And now for the second session, ito yung sinasabi ko po na document 2. So we will focus on the guidelines on the registration and granting of permit and recognition to public and private CDCs and LCs. Yan. Same po ito na naipasa din noong September together with the standards and guidelines. So, in this document, makikita natin dito yung introduction, syempre, then the goal and the objectives of the guideline, the process of registration, then yung granting of permit, and then, ang maganda po dito, naka na dito na, nasa appendices na po, yung mga template na kailangan nyo po 
in terms of certificate, yung mga forms, information sheet, worksheet. So you can find all everything in this document. So here's the process. Basically, ang process natin, registration. When we talk of registration, pareho po. We register the public or even yung mga old na, na child development centers natin, i-register re natin to. At the same time, kailangan din mag-register ng mga private child development centers offering programs for 0 to 4 years old. Anong purpose ng registration natin? The purpose of registration is so para ma-map natin. Ma-map natin ilan na nga ba ang centers in our community or in our locality. Kasi para na-address din natin, minsan kasi nagkakaroon tayo ng gap with the data. Nakakala natin, mababa lang yung nasa servisyohan natin ng programa, particularly on the center-based programs for 0 to 4. Akala natin mababa yung number. Pero kasi, minsan hindi natin na map ilan nga ba yung mga bata na naka-enroll sa mga private centers. So, this is very important na mamap po natin siya. Okay? Next, once registered, they need to secure permit to operate. Pero sino po ang magsisecure ng permit to operate? Those lang po na nasa private. Again, yung mga private centers or learning centers offering programs for 0 to 4, kailangan nilang magsecure ng permit to operate. Saan po sila magsisecure ng permit to operate? So, the private CDCLC applies permit to operate with required documents where sa office po ng mayor through the City Municipal Social Welfare Development Office. So, once nakapag-file na sila ng permit to operate, isasubmit po ito sa uh, mayor for inspection. And then, pag nakapag-comply sila, magbibigay po ng certificate uh, ng to operate for 3 years. Sino mag issue The local government unit will issue a permit to operate once compliant po yung ang ating private center. But for those na uh, who will fail, fail to comply, temporary permit to operate lang for one year. And then the CDC or the LC must comply with the locking requirements po within that period of one year. Kung hindi sila makapag-comply, so back to square one again. Okay. So, yeah. Now, after that, three years after, for, for private po ah, three years after, pwede na silang mag- uh, ask for recognition, yung process for recognition. The term recognition, ito po yung ginagamit natin doon sa process before ng accreditation. Just to provide you with a uh, brief background bakit po recognition ay ginagamit natin. During the time na pinaprocess po ito, uh, it was presented to the uh, Secretary of the Department of Education, which is the chair back then, so si Secretary Armin Luistro. According to him, it's not proper to use the term accreditation kasi uh, in the academe or other institution, once you're accredited, you receive incentives. But in our process of accreditation, wala tayong binibigay na, na incentive. That's why sabi niya, it's safe to say or to use the term recognition. Kaya nung maipasa po ito, hindi ginamit yung term na accreditation. But rather, we use the recognition. Okay? And... Sana malino po yun uh, to all of us. Now, here's the process of recognition. Sige, tingnan natin. The CDCLC recognition process, first, letter of intent for recognition by the mayor addressed to the ECCD Council through the DSWD Regional Office or the Field Office three years after permit to operate. So, let me clarify that. Sabi, three years after permit to operate. So again, this is for private learning centers or child development centers lang. But for the public, if you're ready or nag-expire na or nag na yung effectivity ng accreditation before or the recognition, if you use the recognition, pag nag na yung validity niyan, pwede na po siyang i-file again for recognition. Saan po natin ipapadala? Again, it should be through the field offices. Kung nasaan yung inyong local government unit. So for this recognition, we have two processes. So first is the internal assessment for three months. So internal assessment, basically, ang ibig sabihin po nito is yung preparation of your center. 
your own center, yung, nag, yung hinahandle mong center. Sino yung composition? For public, internal assessment team, you have the child development teacher or the child, deve child development worker na nag-handle mismo nung center. And then the barangay captain, the barangay nutrition scholar, the barangay health worker, and then the president of parent teachers workers association. Bakit ito yung composition ng public internal assessment? Kasi nga po, pinaprepare nila yung center para sa evaluation. So dito, andyan yung involvement ng barangay kasi patinan nila dun sa leadership and management in terms of planning, in terms of budgeting, ang makakapagsabi niyan is the barangay. And then yung health and nutrition din, ang makakapagsabi niyan, yung mga barangay health worker, yung barangay nutrition scholar, sila yung makakapagsabi or sila makapagbibigay ng ibang documents. Kaya pag tinignan ninyo, ito yung sinasabi natin kasi all them, all of them magtutulong-tulong po sila para i-prepare yung center before the evaluation. Same with the private internal assessment team. The difference is manggagaling din sa yung sa loob ng center nila or ng school nila. So the administrator or the director or the principal and then the child development teacher, then the member of the board and the president of parent teacher workers association. So once na mag-comply sila, assess sila, this is like a self assessment. Once they comply, pwede na silang magdiretso to external assessment. They'll just inform the field office of the DSWD that they're ready for external assessment. But for those who will not uh, comply or may mga lacking documents, bibigyan sila ng 6 to 12 months or depende before the end year, uh, before the year ends. So, para i-comply yung mga deficiencies nila with documents, practices, and kung ano man yung hinihingi ng indicator. So, ito po yon. The mayor informs that they are ready so for external assessment. And the external assessment for 3 days. Ang team po dito, we have the deputized regional, provincial, social welfare and development officers as head of the team. Sino ang magde-deputize sa kanila? So, may mga trainings tayo na pinoprovide for external evaluators. So, may mga trainings na initiated by the DSWD. So, there are um, external evaluators that tinrain nila. Meron din mga external evaluators na tinrain din ng EC City Council. Pero ito po, iisa lang yung nag issue ng Certificate of Proficiency. So, it, it is issued by the ECCD Council through the Executive Director. So, centralized po yung ating database kung sino yung mga qualified at sino yung mga certified na external evaluators. And take note, uh, once na sinabit po siya sa ECCD Council for confirmment, yun yung una-una natin tinitingnan yung pirma ng evaluator. Yung bang evaluator na nag-process nito is certified by the ECCD Council. Kasi kung hindi po certified, hindi natin itutuloy yung process of reviewing and confirmment of their recognition. Okay? So, malino po dapat yon And uh, sino yung iba pang mga creditors, the members or the evaluators, the City Municipal Social Welfare Development Officer, then administrator director principal for private but we also include kasi since naintindihan natin na yung mga MSCS and PSWDOs natin they're very busy kasi this is just one of the many responsibilities na meron sila for the local government unit kaya we also include we accept yung mga ECCD focal person or other uh, trained or hired po ng local government as part of their uh, evaluators so kailangan tayo po, compliant na tayo doon and we will uh, assist you in the process of your um, recognition or the evaluation of your centers. So you just need to follow the guideline, you coordinate with the field offices of the DSWD where in your LGU is um, located. So kailangan talaga na makapag-comply tayo doon. That's why we have this um, orientation. We had this orientation. So the implementation scheme at yung gagawa natin, um, orientation pareho by ECC City Council, the DSWD, through the provincial, the city, the municipal, and then yung GOCCs and GAs and private. Again, just a review. Our process, we have the registration, permit to operate, then granting of recognition. Okay. So I hope we are guided with this um, session on how we're going to prepare our center on uh, the process of evaluating for recognition. 
As a concluding statement, I'd like to share you another quotation from Villa Foster. It says here, Quality is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligent decision, and skillful execution. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you, Sir Carl, for that informative presentation. For our next presenter, let me introduce Ms. Remilin Malakilia, our Program Development Officer 3 from the Programs and Policy Unit of the ECCD Council. She will explain to us the competency standards for child development teachers and child development workers. Good day to everyone. This will be the last topic for this session. And to continue the discussions, I am Ms. Remelin M. Malakilia, Program Development Officer in the Program and Policy Unit of the ECCD Council. We will talk about the competency standards for child development teachers and child development workers. This document is developed by the ECCD Council in partnership with UNICEF. Their competence and other service provider will be helpful in ensuring quality, programs and services for our very young children. Service providers will include child development teachers, child development workers, volunteers, teacher aides, and other individuals who are involved in the delivery of quality ECCD programs and services in terms of health, nutrition, early education, and social services. The rationale behind the competency standards for child development teachers and child development workers is the need for competent teachers who can deliver quality early childhood care and development. Access to early childhood care and development means assurance of quality service delivery. And lastly, this can only happen if all early educators, including parents and caregivers, will possess the basic requirements and perform the standards and competences expected of them. Our goal for the competency standards is to ensure that all child development teachers and child development workers and other service providers have developed and demonstrated the necessary knowledge, skills, and attitudes to meet children's developmental needs and deliver high-quality early childhood programs for all children from birth to four years old. Quality ECCD programs depends greatly on the quality of the interactions between the child and the teacher. Here you can see the framework of competency standards with its mission and vision. For holistic approach, this covers seven domains such as child growth, development and learning, health, nutrition, safety and well-being, curriculum, learning environment and experiences, assessment and reporting, family involvement and community linkages, na ito po ang pinakamahalaga na isinasama natin ang, ang, ang ating pamilya tulad ng mga magulang at komunidad para sa pag-unlad ng ating mga bata. And we also include the personal and professional development of our service providers. When you talk about standards, this describes the knowledge, skills, values that characterize good teaching practice or effective teaching. Competencies focus on what educators need to know and be able to do to demonstrate that they are well-rounded and well-prepared to educate and care for young children. All in all, in these seven domains, we have 10 standards and 75 competencies. At ito na rin po ang ginamit nating basis on the self-assessment tool on teaching competencies for child development teachers and child development workers. Ang mahalaga po sa self-assessment tool na ito ay nakasulat po siya into task para po malaman ng ating mga teachers at ating mga workers kung ano ang kanilang nalalaman o kung ano ang dapat nilang gawin sa pagpapaunlad at pagpapalago ng ating mga bata. 
Kasama po nito ay nagkakaroon sila ng opportunity to evaluate and chart their progress. This serves as a functional basis and planning and implementations of appropriate technical assistance to be given to them. Meaning, ito rin po ang inyong magiging basihan sa pagre-request ng kanilang mga trainings. With this, we can easily determine whether they are beginner, performer, or skilled. So meaning, beginner, they have started to do the task but needs assistance. Performer, they can do the task well. So ito po yung gusto natin, yung skilled. They are confident to do the task and can assist others as well. So we have the same domains in the self-assessment tool and the competency standards. Here's a sample of the self-assessment tool. As mentioned, the result of the self-assessment tool will serve as the basis for the provision of technical assistance. And I would like also to emphasize that the result is not intended to use for promotion. For the technical assistance, this is anchored on the belief that each organization is responsible for its own growth and development. It is aligned with the organization's vision, mission, and organization's needs. It is an ongoing, systematic, and interactive process that is designed to achieve results. The goal for the technical assistance is to help solve problems. So basically, dito natin makikita or mas madali natin ma-identify ngayon kung anong trainings ang pwede natin ibigay sa ating mga teachers at ating mga workers. So dito din, makikita natin kung uh, nag-level up ba sila from beginner to performer and to skilled. And dito, makakakuha tayo ng magandang resulta at pwede rin itong maging basihan sa paggawa ng ating mga pulisiya. For the training frameworks, we have three tiers. Tier 1, this is the local government initiated training in the city, municipal, or provincial base, like conferences, workshops, inductions, and orientations. This may also include other service providers working or supporting CDTs and CDWs. For Tier 2, this is institutions based. One of the sample is the ECCD Council uh, Initiated Training on Early Childhood Education Program. This is customized training for CDTs and CDWs that credit 18 units under Master of Arts in Early Childhood Education in partnership with state universities. For Tier 3, this is one-on-one -on -one training like mentoring or coachings and advising. For your guidance, here is the technical assistance mechanism flow, starting from needs assessment to planning and implementation. For easier planning, we prepared technical assistance plan template for you. For more information on the competency standards, you can visit our website at www.eccdcouncil.gov.ph. Just click download and resources. Thank you! Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Melin, for enlightening us with your presentation. So now we can move on to our Q&A. Uh, any questions that you might have are welcome now. So you may type in po your questions in the Q&A box for those in Zoom. And for those who are in Facebook Live, just type it in the comment section. So may we also invite our presenters, Sir Carl and Ms. Melin, to join our panel for the Q&A. Okay, so uh, I have a question here for uh, Ms. Jerilyn Abanilia. Kailangan po bang magparegister both public and private centers sa LGU? 
Sir Carl, would you like to answer? Um, yes, thank you, Miss Jolly. Good, uh, good morning to everyone. Ah, uh, po ako. Yes. Uh, based on the process, both public and private uh, should be registered under the local government unit through the Office of the City or Municipal Social Welfare and Development. Uh, the main purpose of this registration is for us to be able to map kung ilan na nga ba yung mga existing centers natin pareho po sa public and sa private. Kasi we need data specifically on children na nabibigyan natin ng serbisyo pagdating sa mga center-based programs and other ECCD programs. That's why it's very important na the local government ay i-register po lahat ng kanilang mga uh, existing na public and private child development centers or learning centers within their locality. At ito po ay walang payment. Libre po ang registration. And siguro just to reiterate, for the private schools din, uh, kayo lang po yung kailangan naman mag-secure ng permit to operate. And the permit to operate po ay kailangan i-process sa ating mga local government unit kung saan nyo po i-establish or kung saan nakalagay yung inyong mga uh, centers offering programs for 0 to 4 years old. And even even uh, um, school ito na integrated na may elementary or high school, basta nag-offer po kayo ng program below, zero, uh, be below 4 years old, kailangan po na mag-secure ng permit to operate ng lahat ng mga private uh, schools or learning centers sa local government unit. Thank you, Ms. Jolly. Okay, sir. Thank you, Sir Carl. Uh, we have another question from uh, Ms. Midian Santos. Uh, Ma'am, sir, we joined this child study center. Is already monitored, assessed, assessed, done last May 5, 2022. Nasa recommendation na po kami from our CSDWO, uh, Ma'am Merlinda Ibusag from Mandaluyong sa TSWD ECCD. Nakapending po itong accreditation namin, both our center and CDT because of the new tools daw po kasi ang nagamit sa amin upon monitoring ay old tools daw po. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, regarding this, uh, let me just reiterate na this tool po na ginagamit natin for recognition was passed 2015 and we already provided with a lot of um, advisories regarding the utilization of the tool. So 2021, um, it was already agreed by the ECCD Council Governing Board that we will uh, no longer uh, accept the result of the AO15 kasi dahil may pinasa na nga po ang Governing Board Dahil we want to really upgrade and update yung ating uh, program delivery and to ensure that we provide quality progress for our children. Kaya natin in-update and in-upgrade yung ating um, standards kasama ng evaluation tool. So, ganun din, inalign din natin po ito sa indicators for the child-friendly local governance audit na ang, ang tatanggapin natin na uh, means of verification pagdating doon sa number of accredited center is the recognition issued by the ECCD Council na hanggang 2021. But uh, since meron naman pong mga uh, na-accredit na, may mga na-accredit na noong uh, 2022 na using the um, AO15 or the old tool, Ang agreement po kasi we had a meeting with the DSWD. Uh, we met with the Undersecretary, the Assistant Secretary, and the Bureau Director of the Standards Bureau na we will assist those centers na na-accredit ng 2022 using the old tool or the AO15. We will revalidate that result through the recognition evaluation tool. So mag-co-coordinate uh, po tayo with the PSWDOs 
with the field offices, the, ECC, uh, the DSWD Central Office, the Standards Bureau, will release a communication letter. I don't know if it's an advisory or a memo to the field offices. Kasi po, ang naging agreement, uh, even with the governing board, is that we will follow kung ano po yung nasa batas and we will follow kung ano po yung guidelines natin. So, as is po yung guidelines and uh, standards na meron tayo ngayon, yung po yung susundin natin. Okay, Sir Carl, there's a follow-up question from uh, Janelle Soriano. Will the trained accreditors of DSWD field offices still be the evaluators, sir? Um, yes. yes. They will still be allowed to, to uh, evaluate using the recognition evaluation tool so long as meron po silang uh, certificate of proficiency issued by the ACCD Council. So, ang next question is paano po ba sila makakakuha ng Certificate of Proficiency? Uh, kailangan po na meron kayong training na ipoprovide sa inyo on how to utilize and uh, conduct yung uh, evaluation tool. So, you can ask uh, orientation from the DSWD or the ACCD Council or training para po dito and then may mga requirements lang po at least uh, 24 hours yung training or 3 days para kayo mabigyan ng certificate of proficiency and hindi po pwede ang mga teaching para maging external evaluators so yung mga non-teaching staff and has the capacity to evaluate you will be endorsed by your field offices as an external evaluator po para mabigyan kayo ng proficiency. So, kailangan po talaga may certificate of proficiency kasi kami ang ginagawa namin nila, Ms. Milin, pagka sinasubmit po dito sa office yung inyong mga uh, recommendation and request for confirmment, yun yung unang-unang tinitingnan namin kung sino yung nakapirma doon sa evaluation tool. If yung nakapirma na name na evaluator or the external evaluator ay nasa list, nasa database po, nung ating mga certified na external evaluators, we will proceed with the review. And then if uh, compliant, they will be conferred with the level of recognition. But if the uh, evaluator is not uh, certified by the ACCD Council, uh, we communicate it to the field office that we will uh, hold the evaluation since uh, the external evaluators is not certified by the ACCD Council and not deputized by the regional office. Okay. Uh, okay, Sir Carl, uh, on that note, no, uh, we have a question from Ms. Agnes Tambalo of the SWD field office. Um, and she asked, uh, will the deputized assessors of the SWD still be mobilized? Who will pay for their subsidy? Will the previously issued DSWD accreditation certificates still be considered until when? Po? Yes, actually, um, based then on sa naging meeting with the uh, DSWD uh, central office, since yung request is hindi pa naman napaprocess. We all know naman, lalo na yung mga nasa local government unit, it's not an easy process ng pag-transfer ng, ng, ng uh, budget, lalo na nasa GAA po yun and it was uh, downloaded to the DSWD. So, uh, there will be a consultation with the DBM. But still, uh, this budget that was requested by uh, DSWD to the DBM to be transferred to the ECCD, uh, still remains. Uh, yun pa din yung subsidy na ibibigay sa mga evaluators. There will still be a subsidy na ibibigay sa evaluators. But for now, hindi din natin pa masabi if uh, kailan siya maitatransfer at kailan siya maibibigay. But um, again, uh, I know uh, siguro hihingin po natin yung, yung assistance and tulong po ng ating mga uh, external evaluators, most especially the field offices, kasi you have the capacity to do this, that uh, let us all assist our local government kasi syempre uh, we really need to ensure and uh, continue yung processing natin of uh, 
uh, evaluating center so that talagang makikita natin at masisiguro natin na we're providing quality programs to our children, most especially in this uh, time of peril, lalong-lalo na pagdating sa um, learning crisis na meron tayo, particularly in the Philippines. There are a lot of researches na isa tayo sa mga hardly hit pagdating sa educational crisis. And yun nga, with the last Educators Congress, uh, there's this one speaker from uh, ARNEC and UNESCO na talagang malaki ang impact ng developmental loss. And sinasabi na mas malaki yung magiging krisis natin sa edukasyon pagka pinabayaan natin yung kalidad ng programa na binibigay natin sa mga bata, particularly in the early years, which is yung nasa atin na 0 to 4 years old. So that is our appeal, the appeal of the ACCD Council na sa ngayon na may transition tayo, magtulungan po tayo kasi we have this common goal of really uh, wanting to develop and uh, ensure na yung foundation ng ating mga bata ay matibay, matatag at maasa. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sir Carl. Uh, another question, uh, this is for Ms. Melin, uh, all the way from Ilocos, LGU. Um, hello, good morning. Uh, it's good to know that you developed uh, this self-assessment tool for the CDTs and CDW, CWs. Ang tanong, ang tanong ko po is how often po ba ginagawa ang pag-assess sa mga teachers? At meron po bang schedule na dapat sinusunod dito? And uh, ilang beses po ba dapat ito ginagawa sa isang taon? Good morning. Thank you for raising that question. Actually, we don't have a fixed schedule or uh, kung ilan ba dapat tayo nagkakandak ng assessment sa ating teachers. But uh, we recommend or suggest na at least uh, twice a year para uh, sa first assessment nila, eh, makakapagplano po tayo base doon sa magiging result kung anong technical assistance ang bibigay natin sa kanila. And uh, after that, yung second assessment nila, uh, doon na makikita natin kung sila ba ay nag-progress. Kaya kailangan din natin i-evaluate yung technical assistance na prinubay natin sa kanila para fully uh, makita natin kung mas kailangan pa ba nila ng deeper training para mas maging makapacitate natin ang ating mga teachers and workers. Thank you. Okay, I hope that's clear. Uh, another question from Ms. Elsa Santiago. Uh, good morning, po, Sir Carl. How many years po ba ma-expire ang permit ng isang daycare center? Okay, um, for the permit to operate, uh, if you are granted and compliant to the uh, requirements by the local government unit, you will be given at least uh, three years na uh, validity of your permit to operate. But if we're talking about the recognition, uh, you have uh, three levels. So level one, that is effective for three years. Level two, four years. And level three, po, five years. Okay. Uh, from the Facebook page, Espiritu Baclayan. Uh, her question is, Kapag di, di pa po expired ang Certificate of Accreditation issued by DSWD, valid pa rin po ba kahit mayroon na po itong bagong tool? Uh, yeah. Yes, um, valid po tayo hanggang 2021. So yung mga 2021 na na-accredit tapos nakakuha ng 3 years validity, so meaning until 2024 approximately valid pa yung ating um, result ng accreditation. But for the 2022, it should be the recognition tool ng ating um, EO owner na valid pa yung kanilang um, recognition and accreditation. Po. Okay, another question from Christina Obenza. Uh, what if the Child Development Center needs its existing need for recognition from the LGU? Um, medyo vague yung question pero I, I'll try to answer Miss Jolie. Uh, 
in terms of the need, uh, well, all centers, kailangan naman talaga siya i-evaluate whether you're buying to have a certificate or not. But it, it, it needs to be evaluated so that we will, uh, will be able to ensure that we're providing quality programs doon sa ating mga bata, sa ating center. And then if you want, again, in, in the process, if you're a both public and private, you need to coordinate with your local government unit kung paano kayo makakapag-schedule ng, ng evaluation. But hindi lang siya for external evaluation kasi you also have yourself, the tool can be also used as a self-assessment tool. Kasi if you want to check ano na nga ba yung status ng, ng implementation ko ng programa ko, am I doing the right thing, uh, right thing? Nasa standards ba yung implementation ko ng program? So kayo mismo, yung team ninyo, handling or manning your center, can use the tool. Kasi napaka uh, specific naman with the indicators and sub-indicators kung ano yung mga dapat nakikita, ano yung mga dapat na-obserbahan, at ano yung mga dapat na mga programang ini-implement sa inyong mga center. So yan, depende po kung ano ang purpose ng evaluation. Sir, may nagtanong, where can we get the assessment booklet? Yeah, yeah. boss. So, pin-remote na po yan. Uh, Ms. Milin, can you promote sa ba natin pwede mga po? Uh, okay, you can get the uh, assessment tool in our uh, Facebook, uh, in our official website po. Yung, uh, just uh, look for the resources and uh, you can download it po. Okay. Uh, Professor Carl, tama po ba na hindi na pwedeng gamitin ang AO15 tool ngayon para sa mga magpapasis? Yes po. Um, since kasi it was approved by the ECCD Council Governing Board na ang gagamitin na nating tool talaga is, is the uh, recognition tool. Kasi it's part of our mandate. In our mandate for ECCD, the RA 10410, we need to upgrade and update. That's why we developed this program to really upgrade and update. Ano na nga ba yung current? Ano nga ba yung need talaga? Ano yung appropriate for children? Kaya enhance natin yung tool. Actually, it's an enhancement of the 8980. Kasi kung titingnan ninyo, there are a lot of indicators na nanggaling din siya doon sa tool na ginagamit for accreditation before. But syempre, nag-iiba-iba yung pangangailangan yung bata, nag-iiba-iba yung, nag yung generasyon. So we need to adapt and we need to understand ano nga ba yung specific kailang, na kailangan nila. Kaya if, if you will ask again, both um, legally and uh, appropriateness ng tool, ang gagamitin na talaga natin is the recognition tool. And this was already resolved and agreed with uh, several governing board meetings and issuances of resolutions. So, yan po. The answer is we will use the recognition tool. And that is the only tool po na gagamitin natin to evaluate uh, and ensure yung quality of our ECCD programs and services. Okay, another question from uh, Sir Bong Castillo of Kamatog. Good morning. For the document review, how many exemplars do we need to print out for each item included in the assessment tool? How many years do the documents need to cover? For example, the curriculum guides in the past three years, we shifted from in-person to online to hybrid. The next year, we will transition to full in-person learning. Should the CGs for each modality be printed out and presented for review? Um, actually, if you will check on the evaluation tool, ang, ang ating ini-evaluate, lahat po ng mga evidences to be gathered and means of ver verification is the current status. Yung, uh, like for uh, data on children, yung current enrollment. If uh, it's on the physical aspect, yung current um, status ng, 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 ng center. So hindi natin ina-assess kung halimbawa, like what you just asked in the curriculum, 
hindi natin siya ina-assess yung transition kung nag-iba-iba yung curriculum. At tinitingin natin, ano yung curriculum na ginagamit mo in that year? Yun yung tinitingnan natin. Kasi ang tinitingnan natin is the appropriateness of the curriculum to the children. And is it aligned with the early learning development uh, per, uh, validated for Filipino children? So, yun po yung mga tinitingnan natin. Okay. Uh, this question is coming from a private school. Uh, laps na po ang recognition namin. Sana kami mag-renew ng recognition. Good morning. Uh, actually po, uh, right now, we are doing, ginagawa pa po rin namin ang pagre-revalidate po ng mga uh, certificate of recognition na binigyan na po ng Department of Education. So, you can, uh, if you want to revalidate your existing uh, recognition, you can uh, apply for dito sa ECCD Council. Just, uh, Uh, prepare a letter of intent to our officer in charge and then uh, kasama po doon yung mga documentary requirements na post naman po ito sa aming website and then tsaka na po namin uh, i-revalidate -re yung inyong mga recognition thank you uh, okay uh, there's an, a question from Clarissa Patio With this orientation, uh, can we have already our certificate of proficiency? We have already submitted the requirements for the issuance of our certificate of proficiency, but we were not provided. Thank you. Yes po, uh, magbibigay po kami ng uh, certif electronic certificate for those participants na nag-attend po ng uh, via Zoom. Pero doon po sa uh, Facebook, uh, wala po kasi uh, unless na lang po na naka-indicate po yung names nila doon para mas makita namin yung trends. And, uh, another is this training po is not equivalent to a certificate of proficiency. Iba po ang training natin for proficiency kasi again, as mentioned kanina na uh, para maisyohan kayo at least merong three days training. Kasi the three days training includes po yung actual experience, actual experience po in assessing a center. So may mga mock assessment po. Yun. Tapos yung sinabi din ni Ms. Mirin kanina, yung certificate for this orientation naman po, kailangan yung mag, tama, magsagot ng evaluation. Mm -hmm. Yes, kailangan nilang mag-submit first ng evaluation para doon tayo yung mag-rely kung uh, nakapag-attend sila ng pagdating. Okay, next question from Crystal Riddle. Good day po, ma'am sir. Ask lang po namin kung sa recognition po ba after municipal level, direct po ba sa DSWDFO? Yes po, in the guidelines... It shall be uh, through the DSWD field office. Pag binalikan po natin yung kite line, it's through the DSWD field office po. Uh, another follow-up question for Sir Carl. Accepted pa rin po ba ang paggamit ng old tool for accreditation or dapat new tool na po ang gamitin for recognition? Apo. Um, to reiterate po, Uh, hindi na po siya i-accept even with other um, evaluations po like the CFLGA and the SGLG hindi na. Okay. Uh, question from Ms. Joanne Guerrero. Good morning po, Ms. Joanne from PSWDO Bampanga. Sa indicator po ng CFLGA under development regarding po sa mga recognized CDC, CDTs, and CDWs, hindi po magiging 100% dahil sa mga PLCs na wala pa naman po three years na nag operate in such cases po. Um, yes po. Uh, tama, Ma'am Joan and hello po sa mga taga-pambanga. <laughs> Opo, uh, kasi since hindi pa nga natin na uh, ano yung mga PLCs, magiging mababa talaga yung compliance natin. That's why we need to convene 
our private learning centers and um, orient them on the process. And then, katulad din noon, dapat yung ating mga local government unit, particularly, particularly our cities and municipalities, dapat ready na sila to uh, process yung mga requirements and requests for permit to operate ng ating mga private learning centers. Uh, okay, so another question. Good morning to Sir Carl po. Pwede na po ba namin i-process ang mga private learning center na may permit to operate para sa kanilang recognition? At kung mayor po din ba ang gagawa ng letter of intent para sa kanila? Um, yes po. Since kasi ang ECCD program is under the local government unit, based on uh, the R8 1014 also aside from the local gov uh, local government code na responsibility po talaga ang talagang implementer is our LGU so doon po din ang processing ng request so kasama siya sa mga ipaprocess na ating mga MS or CS na request na ipapa uh, approve po sa ating mayor bago siya ipadala sa sa field offices po ng DSWD. Okay. Uh, from H.C. Fernandez, na-train po kami noong 2019 pa. Pero until now, wala pa po kami, wala pa po kayong binibigay na certificate of proficiency. Uh, sir, uh, I think we need to know specific details about this. Saan po yung training na naganap noong 2019? If you can type in uh, your, ano, your clarification on this. So next question. Alright, uh, MSWDO po ba gagawa ng intent letter? Sorry. Opo. Um, well, alam naman natin yun yung process sa uh, local government unit. Uh, it will be prepared by the MSWDO but it will be signed by the local chief executive. Mm -hmm. Yung letter, letter of intent. intent. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, from Sir Rogelio Lanang, may upcoming training po ba this quarter for evaluators? Sa ngayon po, wala pa po kaming naka-schedule na uh, trainings for the evaluators. Thank you. And uh, he has a follow-up question. Can an ECCD focal from the municipality be allowed to apply as evaluator? Yes. Uh, yes. Pwede po silang maging um, part of the pool of evaluators. Basta magko-comply sila doon sa ating qualification. Actually, the qualification lang is uh, they were able to supervise or handle ECCD programs in their locality at the same time, they are not uh, non-teaching staff. Okay, they're focused on monitoring and evaluating yung status nila ngayon na magiging evaluators sila. Or uh, isa din uh, to augment yung ating um, pool of evaluators, uh, part of the consideration, and this will be discussed actually with the PSWDOs for the preparation uh, even with the revalidation po of the, the uh, result of 2022 accreditation, na idagdag yung mga retired na child development workers and teachers who has the capacity to do the evaluation process. So, yan po yung update natin. And uh, yung na-mention ni Ms. Melina, na wala pa tayong nakaschedule na training for external evaluators uh, siguro pwede natin siya i-discuss din kasi uh, shout out po sa mga PSWDOs na nandito ngayon kasi we will uh, have uh, a PSWDO forum uh, 
sinasabi na namin sa inyo in advance kasi this will be uh, one of the highlights ng discussion natin uh, since uh, we were relying on the capacity of the local government unit, particularly the PSWD hosts, in assisting us uh, in this endeavor. Po. So, yeah. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, nabanggit niyo po kanina na recognition ang best term since we are not providing incentive. Then why is there an accreditation after maglapse ang recognition nila? Uh, let me clarify po. Uh, pag naglapse ang recognition, hindi po siya ibig sabihin na kailangan na accreditation. Again, pag naglapse ang recognition, hindi exactly na kailangan ng accreditation. So pwedeng recognition yung process. Same thing with with the uh, process before na once maglapse yung, accredita yung accreditation, magpapa-accredit ulit. Ganun din po sa recognition. But another thing is, meron po kasi talaga tayong accreditation. Na sabi nyo nga po na yung recognition kasi walang incentive. Uh, just 2,000... Uh, I, I think it's 2020 or 2019 na na-approve na rin po ng governing board yung guidelines for accreditation. So there is already a resolution and uh, we will release that. Kaya lang kasi nagka-pandemic tayo so medyo na-hold din yung ating mga processing. So i-release din natin yan kasi uh, yung accreditation po part of the accreditation once a center is accredited, may matatanggap pong incentives yung center. So, magkaiba po yung um, level of compliance. Uh, just to give you a hint, yung tool is the same tool. Kaya lang yung level of compliance lang din po, yun yung chine-check natin dito sa accreditation. So, kung halimbawa nandun na kayo sa outstanding level, uh, mataas yung chances na i-validate na lang yung result na, na yon para masabi na you're not just recognized but you are also an accredited center. And once you're accredited, yun nga po yung um, sinabi ko kanina, na magkakaroon ng incentive. Yung incentive is, yun yung inaayos ngayon kasi, well, siyempre, pag may incentive, may budget. So, yun yung inaayos natin ngayon, yung budget na yun to incentivize this uh, high quality uh, programs implemented in those deserving centers. <laughs> okay, uh, another question from Henerita Panapan. Uh, about the evaluation po, how can we level up if our barangay captain is not supportive? Ang, ang hirap pong sagot niya. <laughs> ang hirap sagot din ng tanong. Okay. Uh, Siyempre kasi this program uh, highly depends on the local government unit. Local government unit, particularly the barangays. Kasi syempre, programa po talaga ito ng kapitan. Programa ng barangay. Kasi ang, ang nakikinabang dito ay yung mga mamamayan doon sa barangay. Kung nasaan siya. So mahirap kung hindi siya susuportahan ng, ng, ng barangay captain or ng barangay chairman. So siguro ang sasagot ko is the other way around. Ano ba yung pwede nating gawin para i-own ng ating mga local chief executives para makita nila yung need for ECCD? Kasi um, ang dami ng research, researches regarding, regarding um, the importance of addressing this uh, age and stage of development ng tao. International studies. And um, meron nga po, uh, uh, in, in UK, there are really funding countries, particularly cities and municipalities, for training, for economic development. At alam nyo kung ano yung kanilang isa sa mga programa to ensure that there will be an economic development is mainstreaming their ECCD programs. Ang dami na pong mga converts na bansa ngayon na nakikita nila kung gaano ka-importante yung ECCD program if you want to ensure that our human capital will really work, will become productive, will contribute to, to our society. 
So, yun yung dapat maging understanding. Baka kulang po sa orientation yung ating mga local chief executives about the importance of ECCD. So, kasi hindi pwede, tama kayo eh. Ang hirap gawin ng programa na hindi susuportahan ng ating barangay chairman. Kasi sila ang mag, mag-aalat, sila ang magdedetermine kung ano ang pupunda, pupunduhan na programa. So magandang maintindihan na lang na napaka-importante nitong programa ito. Thank you, Ms. Joyce. Back to you. Okay. Thank you, Sir Carl, for answering that question. Uh, another one from uh, from MS WDO Connor. Okay lang po ba magpa-accredit ulit? kahit hindi pa expired yung accreditation certification? Um, I think if hindi pa expired yung accreditation ninyo na dati using the old tool, tapos you opt to or you wish to be evaluated using the recognition tool, pwede naman po. Kasi sabi ko nga kanina, magkaiba na yung indicators kasi in-upgrade and in-update na natin yung mga indicators from the previous evaluation tool using the uh, for, for the accreditation using the old tool. So the answer is if your intent is to ensure that you're providing quality programs, mas maganda po and I recommend na you request for uh, evaluation using the recognition tool. Okay, uh, question from Lorena Samuante. Uh, good morning, sir and ma'am. Six months in service pa lang po ang child development worker. Pwede na po ba siya ma-accredit? Um, if we're talking of the child development worker, kasi prerequisite po. Pag tinignan nyo, sa, sa, sa old tool kasi, yung AO15, magkahiwalay ina-accredit ang center at ang uh, child development worker or the daycare worker. Pero dito po sa uh, new tool, kasi that is our philosophy na hindi pwedeng maayos ang center mo tapos yung child development worker mo, kailangan pa ng training or assistance kasi hindi na pe-perform ng tama or hindi niya na-utilize ng tama yung ganda ng center. So, hindi pa rin nabibigyan ng appropriate or ng quality program ang bata. Kaya po sa ating new tool, kailangan pareho. Makikita nyo doon sa areas nandoon yung, yung qualification and capacity of the child development worker. At the same time, nandoon din yung physical and the program and the management. Magkakasama po siya in one evaluation tool, in one standard, in one guideline. Kasi dapat pare-parehong nag-e-excel, pare-parehong nagko-comply dun sa ating minimum standard para masabi natin that the center is really providing quality program. So hindi po siya magkahiwalay. And regardless po, regardless of the the length nung 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 Uh, service ng child development worker kasi meron naman na kahit bago lang pero because of uh, the knowledge, the capacity siguro or the trainings nakakapag-perform ng maganda yung ating mga child development workers so regardless po kung gaano nakahaba nilang hina-handle yung center uh, kung kung nakita natin na kaya kasi self, may self assess, it's also a self-assessment tool kayo mismo, yung mga supervisors or the ECCD focal, madedetermine nyo na kung uh, makaka-comply siya doon sa requirements natin sa standards as child development workers or teacher. Okay, uh, next question. I think this is a clarification sa pag-apply ng recognition from Ms. Rhea Osip. Need po ba muna magkaroon ng Certificate of Proficiency? Tama po ba? Yes po. Uh, for an external evaluator, for you to process the evaluation, kailangan po na merong Certificate of Proficiency. Again, that is for the external evaluators po. Okay, thank you, Sir Carl. 
Uh, this question goes to Ms. Milin from Cecilia Matiga. Does it mean to, to say that the ECCD office recognizes the certificate of recognition given by DepEd, meaning the school with certification of recognition by Dep DepEd is accepted and to be re-evaluated by the ECCD? The school with this certificate need not start from zero. Actually, uh, good morning again. Actually, ang re-revalidate po namin, yun lang po ang private school na nag-ooperate ng uh, programs for ages 0 to 4 years old with uh, issued by the Department of Education na uh, kumbaga lapse na po siya. So yun po yung ginagawa namin ngayon, nire-revalidate po namin. Tinutulungan po namin muna sa ngayon ang local government unit kasi nga po, kumbaga hindi pa po... Uh, handa ang ating mga local government unit kasi uh, di pa po uh, nasa pandemic po tayo ngayon and medyo nahihirapan po sila maka uh, halos pagsabay-sabayin ang mga programa yung pag uh, re sa ating uh, mga crisis and kung ano-ano pang mga disaster. Thank you. Okay, another one from uh, private center. Uh, what should the center do if they applied last 2019 but have not yet received a certificate of proficiency? They want a timeline for this, for the private centers. Um, again, uh, let me clarify po. Uh, the certificate of proficiency is for the evaluators. So the centers need not to apply certificate of proficiency. Okay. Private centers shall secure permit to operate for the establishment of their center. And then after ng establishment ng kanilang center, they will apply for recognition in the local government unit where their center is located. Okay po. So I, I hope that uh, clarifies your, your question. But again, if... Uh, May further questions pa po, you can chat habang may time tayo. And if we will not be able to answer all the questions, you can um, go to the help desk of our um, ECCD uh, Council office para masagot natin ayan, sa ating um, website and sa ating Facebook account. Mm -hmm. uh, another question from Rosel Baltara. Uh, sabi niya, is there any consideration daw po to use the old tool just because yun po kasi ang ginamit namin during the initial visitation last year, 2020? Yes, opo. Uh, our consideration nga po is those na na-accredit na last year ng 2022, we will revalidate validate those results. Kasi ang tinitingnan natin is the quality of our programs and services delivered in our cent centers. So, yun naman, uh, hindi naman tayo magiging ganun kahigpit in, in uh, validating the results. But uh, mas magiging uh, tutok tayo doon sa kung paano natin bibigyan ng technical assistance itong mga centers na ito para ma-comply ma nila yung ating um, standards and guidelines. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we will coordinate kasi this is uh, upon the agreement with uh, the Undersecretary of the DSWD. We will coordinate with them para ma-finalize na natin to kasi... Uh, this will be in coordination with the field offices and the PSWDs. Okay, uh, a question from Sir Bong Castillo Camato. I think this is regarding uh, your uh, what you said earlier about incentives. Uh, are those incentives just for public centers or would uh, private schools also receive those incentives? Um, there will be uh, an incentive for uh, private and public but different po magkaiba yung magiging um, incentives po for public at magiba din yung incentive for private po Okay uh, question from Jocely Bardelosa 
kapag na-recognize at na-credit ang mga CDWs, ay hindi na po ba matatanggal ang mga CDWs? Hmm, napaka gandang tanong. <laughs> uh, actually, the, the accreditation is not, sa ngayon po ah, the, the accreditation and the recognition is not a means of security of tenure. Kasi ang ating security is nakalagay doon sa ating um, uh, hiring doon sa plantilla position. But uh, siguro just yesterday kasi there is already a um, committee hearing on the Magna Carta for for child development workers uh, through uh, Senator Marcos. I mean Marcos. So, inaayos natin ito kasi yun yung kailangan natin na magkaroon para uh, ma-ensure natin na hindi matatanggal. And talagang ito yung naging topic din dun, dun discussion. Pero in terms of using the the, the a uh, tool as a, or uh, as a means the uh, recognition as a means of your security hindi po siya pero uh, there are other local government units na ginagawa itong uh, local ordinance na kapag uh, ang center ay uh, recognized or accredited Nire-request sila sa mga sa, na na-retain. Pero I don't know, I, I heard lang nito during our training na hindi ko na malala kung sino local government unit. I don't know if it's possible kasi syempre nga, ang barangay din naman is not directly under the uh, municipality or, or the city kasi may sarili din silang governance. Pero during our training, merong isang local government na nagwo-work daw sa kanila na hindi pwedeng tanggalin lalo na pagka nagkakaroon ng local election, ng barangay election. So, walang natatanggal sa kanila ng mga child development workers. Okay, uh, that's good to know, Sir Carl. So, uh, from from Miss Joy Santos, uh, she said, sana po may orientation din ang mga barangay captains about sa program ng ECCD. Baka po kasi hindi nila alam or hindi po sila well aware na under program po nila ang daycare para suportahan. Uh, yes. Actually, this is part of our plan. Nagkakaroon tayo ng mga barangay summit wherein we invite uh, barangay officials para to inform them and to orient them on, of the ECCD programs and services and actually the importance of ECCD. So, Meron naman po tayong ginagawang ganyan. And also, uh, since siyempre napakaraming barangay sa Pilipinas, uh, we also do itong mga ganito na online platform to provide information. So siguro maglalabas din tayo yan sa ating um, mga uh, website or sa Facebook or sa YouTube. No? Oh, and... Meron din tayong program na ini-implement lalong-lalo na ngayon this year may mga priority sites tayo ng mga provinces we will be coordinating with the provinces for those non-NCDC sites uh, you will be invited Miss uh, Barbie and uh, uh, one of our program development officer will communicate with you regarding this program it's an orientation about ECCD. So we have the induction program para po sa atin, not just the barangay, but from province down to the barangay level. Okay. Question from Ms. Joanne Christine Tubig. Uh, pwede po ba daw gamitin ang DepEd building para going daycare center or child development center? Um, depende po sa agreement na ng ng uh, local government at ng ng DepEd kasi may local school school board naman merong mga uh, schools na they allow they allow yung kanilang uh, school premise para gamitin as uh, child development center so depende kailangan may agreement sila with with the local government and the department of education 
Okay, a follow-up question from uh, Ms. Maria Colleen Gloria. Uh, regarding the, the documentation, where do we find the list of what's needed just in case the municipality doesn't provide us? Again, nasa website po ng uh, ECCD Council po, uh, you can download po the, the, the documents. Uh, Naka-stipulate po doon kung ano pong mga gagamitin nating uh, requirements. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Uh, question from Hilaria Bisaya. Is there any possibility that the ECCD Council could extend financial support to CDCs for equipping of their centers in compliance with the tool, considering that uh, BLGU mainly depend from their minimal IRA? Thank you, Paul. Um, so ngayon po, meron program ang, ang ECCD Council which is, which is the conversion. So this was a, this is an initiated program pero doon pa tayo nakafocus sa ating mga uh, recipient pa ng NCDC kasi ito yung tier 2 ng NCDC. So nagbibigay tayo ng additional funding for refurbishment and repair of their uh, existing uh, mga daycare centers to be converted para maging child development center. Pero pag sinabi natin na lahat limited pa po yung 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 budget natin kaya ganoon din tulungan niyo na si City Council na ipaabot ito sa ating mga mambabata so that magkaroon ng pondo din ng ECCD to support the local government unit in terms of um uh, repairing and updating and upgrading their child development centers both the physical and yung uh, soft component ng kanilang um, centers. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, a question here goes, uh, paano daw po yung mga private learning centers na ayaw po dumaan sa recognition, Sir Carl? Um, so, hindi naman po kasi mandatory yung, yung, yung recognition kasi uh, it's a way of really um, evaluating your center. Kasi, well, a primary reason for us recognizing the centers is so that we'll ensure na quality yung program nila. Ngayon, kung ayaw ng private magparecognize, yun po yung advice ko doon sa mga magulang. <laughs> uh, yun yung, kasi it's, it's, it's like a marketing, marketing um, strategy din na Siyempre, saan ka ba mag -e enroll sa isang isang center na recognized and evaluated na at par with the standards and guidelines set by the country o do sa isang center na alam mo hindi ka sigurado kung anong serbisyo na meron. And hindi naman natin din discredit yung capacity ng mga private centers. Marami talaga and really marami magagandang mga private centers na matataas yung mga standards sila, magaganda yung mga standards sila. So I, I, I cannot see the point kung bakit sila matatakot na iparecognize yung mga centers nila. Pero again, it's not mandatory kung ayaw nila na iparecognize yung center nila. So yun lang, medyo kulang yung value nung, 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 nung center nila. For me, ah, for me, this is not for the council. Parang kulang yung, yung value ng center nila if you're not recognized uh, doon sa nag sinet na standards natin for ECCD. Kasi this this is standards is an international standards also. Okay, Sir Carl, I hope you can answer this also from Ms. Amelin Gumilam. Uh, good morning po. Uh, CDW ex exerted efforts to lobby an incentive increase but wala silang nagawa kasi sabi ng LGU, may law daw na hindi pwedeng mas mataas ang incentive ng CDW sa mga barangay kagawad. In fact, the incentive of CDW did not compensate their workloads. How is this po, ma'am and sir? Mm -hmm. uh, to this question, uh, I'm not really, really familiar about doon sa, sa law that was mentioned. 
Pero, yun nga, in terms of incentivizing, kasi uh, isa din to doon sa pinag-uusapan na iba kasi yung, yung capacity ng child development worker compared to a local chief executive. Magkaiba kasi yung calling. Magkaiba yung, kani- magkaiba yung kanilang um, responsibility. Kaya lang, sa ngayon po kasi ang sitwasyon natin dahil, syempre, the child development worker is uh, under the barangay to the leadership of the barangay and wala pa kasi nga silang plantilla position. So, magkaiba. Kasi ang tinitingin natin, para masabi mo na pwedeng mag-iba yung ano nila is yung uh, professional na, 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 na level. So, sa ngayon, uh, hindi din natin masabi, pero yun nga, mas, ma- mas mataas naman siguro talaga sa barangay dahil nga honoraria yung binibigay for child development workers or child development teachers. But, uh, well, in some other LGUs naman, talagang may augmentation naman na lang gagaling sa, sa office ng, 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 ng mayor mismo to augment yung uh, honoraria na nakukuha ng mga child development workers sa barangay. Okay, this question's from PSWDO Bulacan. Ilang pong external evaluators ang kailangan mag-score sa external evaluation? Tatanggapin pa rin po ba ang old tool sa CFLGA 2022 na may validity hanggang 2025? Mm-hmm. Uh, yung first question, depende po doon sa center kung kaya ba ng isang evaluator lang okay lang po if if yung center is madaming i-assess at kailangan ng dalawa na external evaluator so depende doon sa capacity ng evaluator at depende din doon sa center na i-assess okay po. tapos yung second question kung 2021 again kung 2021 yung accreditation at valid pa siya ng 2024 or 2023, we will still accept that po. Apo. Okay. Uh, question here. Uh, paano daw po kami makapag-request ng training on proficiency? Yan po. Uh, you can ask kasi uh, the field offices, they have pool of trainers po. So there are field offices who has the capacity to provide um, training on the standards and guidelines and the tool. So pwede pong sa DSWD field office, uh, pwede rin naman po ng training sa ECCD Council. Kaya lang yun nga, <laughs> sa dami po nung, nung training request ng local government to the ECCD Council for that, um, hindi natin masasabi na kung ano yung date na in-schedule ninyo, yun yung pwede namin ibigay sa inyo. But yun nga, uh, sa ngayon, isa yun sa pinag-uusapan, paano natin siguro magiging national level. Parang ganito, this is an orientation pa lang. Pero the, for the training, siguro we will think of paano siya mas magiging national level na mas madaming matitrain ng, ng, ng sabay-sabay. So siguro we will keep you posted on that uh, kung ano yun na yung magiging uh, uh, decision of the uh, ECCD Council uh, Executive Committee kung paano natin ma-address itong concern na mas mapadami natin yung ating pool of external evaluators. Okay. Uh, question from Gray Nor Cabero. Do schools who have recognition from DepEd still have to get permit to operate? How about schools who have accreditation from ACSC or PASCO? Sorry, uh, na, nawala yung ano ko, Miss Jolly. Kasi binasa ko lang itong um, from Malolo. Sabi niya, Sir Carl, we are lucky in the city of Malolos because the full support of our city mayor. At this point in time, uh, ano sabi niya? No, no, teka, ayan. 24 na daw yung plantilla position at ano 11 pa na additional for their child development workers 
and 30 na casual position. So congratulations ma'am Ma'am Lolit, ayan, miss you po from Malolos. And I think hindi lang si Ma'am Lolit, madami din in other local government unit na talagang uh, pag nailabi mo talaga ng maganda at naintindihan ng inyong local chief executives, hindi nagiging issue yung support para sa ating mga child development workers to really improve and to provide quality programs for our children. Ayan. Sorry Miss Jolie, nawala ako doon. So, Can you repeat that question? <laughs> okay, that's good news, no? Anyway, I'll repeat the question. Um, do schools who have recognition from DepEd still have to get permit to operate? Um, how about schools who have accreditation from ACSC or PASCO? Uh, it's a different uh, uh, accrediting institution po kasi. So magkaiba din yung ating evaluation tool. Magkakaiba din po yung standards. So ang sinusunod natin, like for, for private school, as mentioned by Ms. Milin nga, we are revalidating the recognition issued by the CCD Council. Pero uh, additional lang po, yung recognition issued by the uh, Department of Education should mention that you have your preschool. Kasi merong mga recognition na hindi kasama yung preschool. Isa po yun sa na natin na nire-revalidate natin. And uh, in terms of uh, granting of permit to operate, granting of permit to operate is like uh, a, a business permit. The difference lang is this uh, permit to operate is particular on your compliance do sa minimum requirement for setting up a center for zero to four. So naglalaps po ito na uh, every three years lang. So magkaiba ito sa ini-issue ng, ng DepEd na pag nag-issue kasi ang DepEd ng recognition, parang lifetime yung, yung issue ones nila. Pero ito yung tipo. Okay? And yun, uh, our, our recognition uh, is different from the standards set by other uh, institution accrediting uh, programs for, for children or for schools. Okay, sir. Thank you, Carl, Sir Carl, for clarifying that. Um, uh, question, uh, from Esther Peralta. Good morning po, ma'am and sir. Uh, I'm from Cagayan Valley po. Possible po ba na mag-undergo din ng recognition ang mga CDCs na may five pupils lang? Uh, paano din po kapag failed sa recognition, what will happen sa CDT and CDWs po? Uh, wala naman tayong minimum number of children na kailangan enrolled sa center. Okay? So, okay lang po kung konti. Kasi kung konti yung, yung bata within the community, so wala tayong magagawa doon. But the, the other question is, baka naman kulang sa promotion si child development teacher or worker kaya hindi nag-e-enroll o hindi alam na mayroong magandang programa pala sa, sa kanyang center. And another is yung question nyo, baka yun nga, poor performance tapos poor yung quality ng program kaya kakaunti yung nag-e-enroll sa ating center. So you need to check on 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 our um, service in programs na dinideliver natin. And I think if the child development teacher uh, is not compliant, again, hindi po natin ginagamit yung term na fail. Kasi parang um, sabi natin failure na si CDT or failure ni program. No. Ang titignan natin is compliant or non-compliant. Kasi we believe na kahit mababa yung nakuha nilang score or num uh, scores doon sa indicators, may, may chance pa na i-upgrade natin siya. So anong gagawin natin? So kung nakita natin mababa, we need to review ano mga indicators ba yung non-compliant ako. And then ito yung magiging part ng planning. Magiging part ng planning ng ating local government unit. Kung paano i-address itong mga non-compliant na to. If it's on capacity building. So andyan yung lecture kanina ni Ms. Milin na uh, <clears throat> competency standards. You can use that to assess the capacity of your child development workers. And pag tingin ninyo, doon yung makikita, ano ba talaga yung specific training? Ano yung specific na kailangan ko i-provide sa kanya? Kailangan ko ba siyang i-enroll? Kailangan ko bang isali sa training? O 
kailangan ko lang silang bigyan ng materials, ng manual, ng libro na pwede nilang pag-aralan or video materials na pwede nilang pag-aralan. So, maraming pwedeng gawin. Our main pur- purpose for evaluating our centers is to improve the delivery of their programs and services. Kaya hindi natin tinitingnan ito as failure. Tinitingnan natin to actually on the other side, on a positive note na ito yung magiging means natin para mas maging appropriate, para mas maging specific yung pag-identify natin ng mga plans and programs natin to improve the delivery of ECCD in our locality. Okay, uh, I guess we only have one more room for one more question. Um, is there a possibility that the ECCD checklist will also be updated to uh, synchronize with the LRPs? Mm-hmm. Sayang wala po dito si Miss Barbie. But pag tinignan ninyo yung... yung Uh, pag naintindihan natin kasi y- yung, yung curriculum, actually, the, the National Early Learning Curriculum, it's already aligned with, with uh, the ECCD checklist. Kasi the ECCD checklist, tinitingnan dito is the development of the child. The LRP, ang tinitingnan dito, ang nandito po is how you're going to provide yung uh, mga activities para mag-develop yung bata na nire-require o na dapat nakikita sa ECCD checklist. But in terms of domain, siguro ang ano lang natin kasi magkaiba yung, yung statement of domains ng, ng ECCD checklist at ng National Early Learning Curriculum or the LRP. Pero pag tinignan nyo, pareho lang po yun kasi tinitingnan dito yung development ng bata. May, may, may language development, may, may uh, social social cultural development so everything or social emotional development everything is aligned magkaiba lang yung 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 wording or statement kasi six indicators lang sa LRP tapos sa uh, uh, six domains sa LRP tapos seven yung domain sa ECCD checklist but again it's uh, both focus on the development of the child But if you're asking if ina-update naman si ECCD checklist, I think there is already a review uh, on updating the ECCD checklist. Kasi tinitignan din natin yun nga. Kasi nagpabago-bago din yung henerasyon ng mga bata. Nagpabago yung way of development. May mga things na kailangan tingnan kung appropriate pa ba siya or inappropriate pa or ito pa ba yung uh, nagiging development ng bata or hindi. So yun po. Uh, okay, uh, actually, we still have more questions in line, uh, but since we don't have any more time, I'm sorry to say, uh, we don't have more time to answer all of them. Uh, so maybe you can just uh, send all your queries to our help desk. Uh, and we're proud to say naman na uh, we're very responsive to all your questions. So we will welcome all questions on our, uh, you can visit our website or our Facebook page there. So. Um, also, no, and daming questions about the evaluation. Uh, I just like to remind everyone to kindly fill up the evaluation form, uh, which will be sent in the chat box and also uh, in our Facebook page. Uh, a link will be sent there, so for for you to be able to get your certificate of uh, participation. All right. So uh, before we end. Uh, we'd like to thank our presenters, uh, our organizers, and of course, all our participants. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate all of you being here and we appreciate all your questions. And we hope uh, that you have learned a lot in today our, our present orientation today. So once again, thank you for joining us and uh, hope to see you next time. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>